Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Yes. We're back with another nice. stat show. 200 players from August 13 to August 19. And uh, it is all over the place, as these smaller sample sizes do, in fact, tend to be. Yep. Age of Sigmar is about 800, and 40K is about 2,700 on our stats. I think there's a little bit more in BCP, but this is just like tournaments that actually have enough players, you know, 10, 12 players. And, you know, maybe there were some other news during the weekend that might be dragging down our player base. And hopefully sometime in the next couple of months, we'll have the nice big explosion of both the new edition and the new player base that comes with it. We definitely did kind of see that with Age of Sigmar with uh, as the new edition was getting close, there was way less people in tournaments. And then when the new edition came out, then it actually it, it was kind of like creeping. It didn't immediately blow up. It just kind of like people started get, getting back into it. But the numbers did rise gradually once the new edition launched. So, yeah, that'd be cool to see yeah. that with Kill Team as well. I think right now they're running about maybe twice as many players as they were maybe like this time two months ago. Yeah. So we'll see in four months time if Kill Team is all the way up at, you know, our past our past numbers, you know, 800, 900 players. It would be pretty wild considering we were at four, three, 400 for the busiest parts of this year. Yeah, I, I feel like the from what I remember, like, did we hit like high 400? Was that the peak? I think we got like 450, 460, maybe even 480 at one point. So yeah, it would be pretty cool if we can double those numbers. And if the new edition is easier to get into, it might actually be possible. Yeah. Well, th fingers crossed. Yeah. Uh, as far as stats today, Mandrakes and Nemesis Claw jumping back up in popularity, being the top two most popular factions. Yep, Mandrake's crushing it this week, all the way up at like 67% win rate, 65% win rate. Average first loss, two and a half games. So doing very, very well. So Meta Menace is here this week, unlike last week when they were played at WTC. I do kind of expect that this is probably muddied up by this being a more chill weekend as far as like overall tournaments go there were four major tournaments one is the celestian crusade that one is out in poland and they had multiple mandrakes players i think two of them and they both made it into the top top three so second and third were mandrakes which does push their numbers up this week quite a bit yeah um there were two other tournaments of note that i guess we can call out here at the no coast open uh, one of our fans on pay on on just another kill team podcast from like way back in the day ran his first you know reasonably large tournament who had a golden ticket they had 14 players show up for a five round gt and they had phobos take it i think phobos are in here let's see where are they at 45 percent win rate but that one player does basically goose the numbers and he's got a 401 record so even though everyone else has been dragging him down he still got the team to a 45 percent win rate <laughs> that's wild yeah um gateway open had the hearthkin salvagers do very well so they're at 56 percent win rate but the first and second slot were both hearthkin salvager players so they also did a good job of boosting the numbers even though a player at the celestian crusade in poland uh dropped uh two three one so he dragged down the numbers while two american players out in the midwest Drag the numbers up, and for Hearth and Salvagers, the other direction. Yeah. Um, Herrington Jaegers, I think this is the lowest we've seen them sub-40 uh, for the first yeah, time. Yeah, 36% win rate. Yeah, they got absolutely crushed across the three large tournaments, which did not help. In the smaller tournaments, they were in striking contention one time from Bob Fleck, who is a uh, East Coast, D.C. area guy who normally plays... Legionary, he's been playing Hernkin Jaeger. He was in striking distance. Let's see if we can spot who he was up against. It might have been, it looks like either Corsair Voidsguard or Brood Brothers. Both of them probably being pretty hard. It was against Brood Brothers. Lost by one point. So they were close to taking the undefeated this week. But overall, definitely one of their weaker weeks as far as their actual numbers go. 
Yeah, intercession's still up there in popularity and uh, still down in win rate. Uh, it looks like it's it's also even lower. Yeah, thirty percent, pretty rough. One three zero record with the Puchong kill team, which Malaysia still out there crushing the noobs. There was actually another note for the intercession squad. So there was another guy in striking contention in Rochester losing probably to Felgor Ravagers. So the rest of the field for Nick C was Mandrakes, Hunter Clade, Geller Pox, Hernkin Jaeger, Intercession, and Warp Coven. And I'm pretty sure his only loss is to Shane. So good job for him. Obviously, though, not winning that matchup. 24 to 11 against Felgor. Yeah, not surprised by that at all. Felgor are tough. Yeah, even on all engaged, you don't think you could take them, huh? I don't know. They surprisingly are just, they have a very e- uncomfortably easy time killing Space Marines. And Space Marines have an uncomfortably unreliable time putting down 10 boons, especially twice. Yeah. Yep, yep. So even though he was in striking contention against Shay, that's not really a, a chance that I would take. So. Intercession definitely have some troubles, especially against the melee hordes. Veteran Guard did have an okay week this week. You know, they were in striking contention one time. And, you know, they've been around a 50-50. This week they have a 61%. No one went an undefeated record. Everyone had a loss somewhere in the thing. But for the last round, it was a seven-round tournament, losing only to Wormblade. Which is a matchup that I think Veteran Guard should be able to take, at least in the past, just because you could stop the Locust with In-Death Atonement, but maybe Wormblade at this tournament, you know, it's a smaller seven, seven-person seven tournament, had had a window that they shouldn't be getting. Yeah, there definitely is a lot of that in general, and and getting windows that you shouldn't is, uh, is really is something you can just pull off and make crazy things happen. Yeah. We also have Compendium doing well this week. Unfortunately for us, a lot of players have eschewed using rosters for whatever reason, so I actually do not know what any of these Compendium players are playing, which is very frustrating. Um, we could rule out a couple things if there's some Compendium things listed, like... Uh, yeah, it's probably Demons. Like, High Fleet normally has its own list. Yeah, High Fleet so. does have its own still with 16 games. Um, is ta- does Talons of the Emperor have its own thing? Uh, Talons might, but we don't have it this week. So it could be Talons and it could be yeah, Demons. Talons could maybe be in there. Demons. <clears throat> kind of the big ones. Yeah. I think one of the other big surprises for this week that I wouldn't have tracked is Imperial Navy Breachers actually had a really good week this week. Uh, really in the sense that one of the players at the Celestian Crusade in Poland went 4-1-1, losing only in the finals. So while most players and most regions have kind of given up on their Imperial Navy breachers, it does seem like Poland has some breacher players still running amok down there. So I don't know if it's a power issue thing or if it is a or if it's some other issue. It's hard to know. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, I did one more little look at them recently and I I mean, they, they still have some teeth like. You know, they yeah, they still they, seem like they the should hatch be cutters still hatch cuts, bomb still bombs. It's just like damage reduction, the power still, fist damage still reduction. slices people in half just fine. So, yeah, yeah, we've got a power axe, that hatch fist, and then the explosive grenade, and those all still work. So, I'm surprised to see them still do so badly. And then this week they did pretty well within striking contention. So maybe it is a situation that most of the good players have just been like, me. I don't really want to play Imperial Navy Breachers anymore. I'd rather play Blooded or something else. And speaking of Blooded, they had a very good weekend this week with two fully undefeated records in Torneo Alfornia, which is in Spain. Uh, first and third place went to Blooded. Second place went to Brood Brothers at that tournament. And How then people did you they... say were at that tournament? Uh, the Spanish, this is a 24 person Spanish tournament, but only three rounds. Vibes. And, you know, the 
Blooded versus Brood Brother matchup is probably a matchup where we would expect that Brood Brothers maybe can take it, but Brood Brothers are a team where if they lose their power piece early, they are not very good going into rounds three and four, so maybe Blooded can take it in that kind of matchup. Um, other big results for the weekend. Corsair Voids card overperforming a little bit with three undefeated records. Two 3-0s and one 2 one along with a couple of losses here and there. Uh, let's see. Kill Team Termination, Battle for Neutral Ground, and Victory Games Comics. All different regions. One in Australia, one in England, and one in Virginia. The same tournament where Brood Brothers beat Hurricane Jaeger in the finals. Yeah, we've got uh, a couple of these teams still down in the dumps. Void Dancer Troop struggling. Um, they've had some oh, yeah. some shining moments, but definitely not so much this week. The same goes for Farstalker, think... Kinband, and Exaction Squad. And Legionary, surprisingly enough. A, an Elite's team that got a buff has not been able to hang with the rest of the crowd. To be fair, you know, Legionaries and Space Marines in general tend to be one of the more introductory factions. And one of the players did go 3-1-1 at the Gateway Open, losing his first round, winning the next three, and then tying in his finals. So maybe not the worst. And also at Phyrexian Life Games, I think, which is a Massachusetts area or like North, like North Northeast, they went 1-1-1, uh, getting into the final round and then losing. But that was against William York, who is going to the World Championships. He came in and to ACO, got it. Wait, it was well... I think it was Will. No, no, no. Will is a Will is a Patreon subscriber. <laughs> uh, but that's like in the Northeast region, and he was in striking contention, but lost to Scout Squad. Which Wild. I couldn't expect, because thinking about the Scout Squad versus Legionary matchup, Nurgle would be good in that matchup. Yeah. Shut right those shotguns. Yeah, I think looking at the other, there's a couple call outs for factions that were in striking contention for some reasonably sized tournaments. Higher Tech Circle, Hearth and Salvagers, Breachers, Phobos Strike Team, and Nemesis Claw. I think we did, I call it, did we call it that Phobos had a fully undefeated record this week? Uh, I've definitely been reading about that a little bit right before we hopped on the show, and that is pretty wild. Yeah, I think we mentioned that they had a 45% win rate, but. Uh, they were one of the fully undefeated this week at a 4-0-1 record at a 14-round tournament with Kadooks, who ran the ran tournament. Uh, one of our older Patreon or Kilt Team podcast yeah. subscribers. And one of the big surprises is Higher Tech Circle, who do not show up on our stats this week because there is a single player or maybe, you know, sub three players who played them worldwide this week. And that was at the Celestian Crusade. They were three, they won three, tied a game, and then lost the last two. So they were in range to try to take that tournament. But it all came apart at the end. Yep, sometimes it'd be like that. Yep. And then uh, two players with Nemesis Claw were in range. Another player with a similar record to that higher tech circle player in Poland who got there and then the wheels came off. Lost, losing the last two rounds, uh, giving it up to the Commandos and Mandrake players who went ahead of them, basically. And even the Imperial Navy Breachers player who got, got in ahead of him. Yeah, we've got a nice spread of teams that landed in that uh, the blue column range. Um, particularly, yeah. I mean, like, Hunter Clade, uh, Hand of the Archon that we hadn't chatted about, they're all kind of like smack in the middle there. Yeah, the teams that we would have called out, basically, you want to play a wide team that can do a mix of ranges, and that's generally what's going to be good right now. I guess it makes sense, you know, without the big things pushing the skew on either end of elites being a little bit too strong or the melee hordes being a little bit too strong, you want to be able to tango and put things in your opponent's way that are difficult for them to manage, and that requires you to have different threat ranges. Yeah. Well... Feels like that's a good stopping spot for the day. 
thanks guys for coming on to the patreon and if you're watching it on youtube make sure to like share and subscribe see you next week <laughs>